Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will see which language is faster, Python or C++, and we will also see why it is faster. First, we will look from the theoretical point of view that which language is faster, and then we will do a little experiment of counting the numbers in order to see which language is more faster. So from the theoretical point of view, as of having some background knowledge, we know that C++ is always faster than the Python because of the several reasons. One of the possible reason is that C++ is a compiled language. It means that every Everything we have write in the C++ language is directly translated into a machine code, which can be directly executed by our machine or PC. While on the other hand, Python is an interpreter language. It means that whatever we have write in the Python, the each line of the code is first translated and then executed one at a time by the Python interpreter. So the execution system in C++ is more faster than the Python interpreter system. Another possible reason of why C++ is faster than Python is that C++ is a statically typed language. It means that all the variables that you have created in the C++, you define the types of these variables in the C++ code and the type of these variables are solved at the compiled time. While on the other hand, Python is a dynamically typed language. It means that all the variables you have created in Python, so while writing the code, you have not defined the type of these variables. So the type of these variables are solved at the runtime in the Python code. So it includes an extra overhead during the execution of the Python code. So that's why C++ is also faster in that case. The third possible reason is that C++ has a manual memory management system. So it leads to the efficient code execution and the optimal memory management. While on the other hand, Python has an automatic memory management system, which is controlled by the Python interpreter garbage collector. So it also includes includes an extra overhead during the Python code execution, so that's why C++ is also faster in that case. Next, we are going to do a little experiment of counting the numbers, so for this, let's move towards my computer screen. So first I'm going to write the program in C++ and we are going to calculate its execution time and later we will write the same program in Python and we are going again to calculate its execution time and in the end we will compare the execution time of both the scripts in order to see which one is more faster. So first in C++ I'm going to import some important libraries for this I have to type hash include and I am going to use the iostream library which is just used to handle the inputs and outputs in C++ and the second library we are going going to use is the chrono which is used to calculate or note the time in C++. So next I'm going to create our main function. For this I have to type in main and the curly brackets. This is the scope of the function. The compiler will execute everything that is inside this scope. So first I'm going to note the starting time. For this I have to create the variable auto start and I'm going to store our starting time in this variable start. For this I have to use the chrono library. So from the chrono library I'm going to use the steady clock and I have to use call now. Now our timer is start and after starting the timer I am going to create a program actually to count the numbers from 0 to 1 lakh. For this I have to create a for loop and inside the for loop I am going to create some variable and I am going to start this variable from 0 and I want to run this loop until it hits 1 lakh. So for this I have to drive i less than equal to 1 lakh and in each iteration we have to increment by one number for this i have to type i plus plus and inside this for loop i am going to write nothing so this program will start from zero and it will keep running until it counts one lakh so after the counting we have to stop over timer and for this i have to again copy this command and paste it here and we have to store this time in the end variable so now to calculate the actual execution time we have to compute the difference in the start and the end time so for this i I have to call the duration from the chrono library for this you can simply type std chrono and you have to type duration here and its type is double you have to type here double and you have to write the name for your variable i'm going to give it the same name duration and we are going to store inside this variable the difference of the start and end you just can write start minus end and next we are going to print our total execution time and for this you have to use the library from the iostream for this you have to write stdc out and in the c out we are going to print over total execution time and for this you just have to type duration dot count and that's it and you can end the line here by stdnl and to make it more prettier you can just add some string here for example the execution time in c++ so it's also in seconds 
so you can type here seconds now we are going to compile our program and see its total execution time for this you have to open your terminal and just use the cg++ compiler to compile our c++ program so i'm going to write g++ and the name of my c++ file and minus o and the name for my output file so i'm give it name speed if i press enter as you can see now the compilation is successful a new file is generated speed.exe so i'm going to run this speed.exe as you can see the total execution time in c++ is 0.0028 seconds so next i'm going to write the same program in the python and we are going to calculate its execution time so in python the library we need is the time so you have to import the time library and the first thing in the python program we have to start our timer and to start the timer i'm going to create the start variable and this variable i'm going to store our start time and for this i have to just write here time dot time now our timer is start and the next thing we are going to count from 0 to 1 lakh and for this i have to create the for loop in python for this you have to type for i in range of one to one lakh you have to type here one lakh and you have to give one more number here so the loop will run from zero to one lakh so it will ignore the last number so that's it and the next i am going to write the pass here and next we have to stop our timer for this i am going to write here end time and now i have to again note the time for this i have to type time dot time and now now our time is calculated so then in the last we are going to print our total execution time for this i have to write here for example execution time in python and our time should be end minus start and it's also in seconds so that's it now i'm going to run our python program and see its execution time for this i have to write here python and the name of our python file which is speed.py so if i hit enter as you can see it will take 0.004 seconds and the same program will take more time as compared to the c++ in c++ it is taking around 2.8 milliseconds but in python it is taking around 49 milliseconds and the next thing you can also observe the lot difference in speed if you give more statements in c++ and in python for example i'm going to increase the number here from 1 lakh to 10 lakh in c++ and again we are going to compile our program and note its time so i have to run dot speed dot exe as you can see now it is taking like 27 milliseconds in c++ to count from 0 to 10 lakh so if we are going to do the same thing in python i have to add one more zero here now i am going to calculate the python execution time and for this i have to write python and my python file name which is speed.py so if i hit enter now you can see the huge difference in between both these times as c++ is much faster than the python now i am going to show you the interesting case where python should be faster than the c++ and it's just because of one statement if you are not well optimize your code in c++ so it will cause c++ to be slower than the python so that's why the optimization memory management is very manual in c++ so you'd have to take care of these things while writing the code in c++ in this way the c++ should always be faster than the python otherwise maybe the python should be faster than the c++ now in our example i'm just going to print these numbers inside this loop and i'm going to print every time whenever it counts from 0 to 1 lakh so we have to just print this number just write drive i here and we have to end our line here we are going to print each number in the next line that's it now if i will run my c++ code and we will calculate its execution time so first i have to compile my code now if i will run the speed.exe now it will counting from 0 to 1 lakh now as you can see because of just adding one c out statement the execution time goes from this to 15.8 seconds which is too much now we are going to do the same thing in the python we are going to print each number inside the loop python so for this i have to remove the pass here and i just have to write here print and i have to print over i number here that's it now i'm going to run our python script and note its time for this you have to write python and the name of the script which is speed.py if you press enter now it is counting from 0 to 1 lakh as you can see the total execution time in python is just 7 seconds while in c++ is 14 or 15 seconds so in this case python is much faster so now you are thinking 
thinking the Python is faster than C++, but that's not the case because we have not optimized our code in C++. For example, we are going to use the same program, but at this time we are going to optimize our code. Now the problem is here with the C out statement because the C out statement is synced with the C language. So whenever you call this C out statement inside loop, so every time the C out statement is called, it is try to synchronize this C out statement with the C language. So it will cause a problem because C++ has its own handling of inputs and output system and similarly C language has its own, own management system for handling inputs and outputs. So for example if I'm going to remove this synchronization with the C code so for example for this you have to type just here std io base and from this you have to just call the sync with std io library which is the C code and we have to call here false we don't need this synchronization that's it now if i am going to compile my c++ code and run it again as now you can see the total time in c++ should be less than the python the c++ code is taking just 6.1 seconds which is slow than the python so it means that c++ is also faster in that case and the other smart way to print these things to make it more faster you have to use the string stream library for this you have to include here and you have to write here as a stream and you have to create one more variable here for example i'm going to create for this you have to just type here as std string stream and you have to create the buffer now we are going to store the value of this variable inside this loop in this buffer and in the end we are going to execute this buffer just once instead of executing instead of calling c out again and again inside the loop we are going to just call this c out once on this buffer for this you just have to store the value of i in the buffer you just have to type here buffer and this operator here and you just write to i here and you just have to write here slash n this is just for the next line and now i have to remove this std out here from here and now i'm going to print this thing outside the loop and now i'm going to print over buffer here for this you just have to call here buffer dot str that's it now again i'm going to compile our program and run our program as you can see now it is much faster now our code just take only one seconds as compared to python where python is taking around 7.7 .7 seconds so this is how you can optimize your c++ code and to make it faster so instead of outputting the value of i in each iteration we have stored all the values of i inside the buffer in each iteration and we are just going to see out all the values of i from the buffer by just calling it once so this is how you can optimize your code in c++ and to make it even more faster than python so next time we will compare the speed of the other languages with the c++ so if you are new on my channel please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also don't forget to press the bell icon to get the updates of the new uploads see you next time bye bye